party started. Thank you all for coming. I want to uh, take a minute to do a quick introduction of our distinguished speaker and panel members. My name is Nasser Azimi. Can you speak up a little bit? How about that? <laughs> I just wanted to be facing you all. But um, again, my name is Nasser Azimi. I'm going to take a minute and introduce our uh, speaker and our panel members. Um, I am a senior partner of Terranomic, a local software and professional services company in Sacramento. So today we have, yes sir, oh, I can come out, all right. <laughs> okay, so, push the restart button. Um, today we have a, a very important session focused on managing multiple projects and in that context, um, how many of you were at the keynote session this morning? All right, majority of you. So you all heard Mr. Kapoor give a, a great presentation on uh, the topic of project management. So this afternoon, it's a further uh, refinement of that particular topic focused on managing multiple projects and the challenges associated with running a governance, getting the funding, managing the priorities associated with all the projects where stakeholders are basically pounding on you to attend to theirs. So he'll show you how to go through that challenging uh, process of balancing your portfolio so that the job can get done without projects experiencing any failures. Just very briefly, those of you who've been at the keynote session, of course, you heard a little bit about Mr. Kapoor's background. But ju just to run through it for those who didn't attend the session, he is a very well-known member of the PM community uh, on a national scale. I used to be a project manager within state government some decades ago, and I remember Mr. Kapoor from back then teaching me how to do the job and manage multiple projects. So I'm very glad to team up with him finally and do this very important session. He's also a founder of Center for Project Management, a very important uh, organization that does a lot of work on a national scale. And he's a professor at UC Berkeley teaching the topic of, guess what? Project management. So he's all about project management. And he's here to share with us how to run that entire scenario within the state of California. Today's session, as I mentioned, is going to focus on managing multiple projects. So the session is going to be somewhat informal. So if you have questions to clarify anything that he's going to discuss with us, please raise your hand and we'll go through that. But I do want to let you know that we have a panel members, a, a, a very distinguished panel here who will sit through the presentation with us and we'll be essentially teaming up to answer uh, any questions that you have during the panel discussion. To quickly uh, introduce the panel members, we have Davud Boats, who's the chief of OTEC. Formerly, Davud was the Chief of Project Oversight at Department of Information Technology when that existed. So he has done a great deal of work in the area of managing projects, overseeing large-scale projects on a statewide scale down to the local government. So he has extensive background and experience with challenging multiple projects that essentially require extensive oversight and project management. Then we have Sumi Smith who is now the Chief of Customer Service at Department of Technology. Yeah, Sumi, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Depart <laughs> Department of Transportation. Um, Sumi was formerly the Chief of uh, Portfolio Management Office at EDD. So Sumi also brings a great deal of background with some of the largest projects in the state of California, unemployment insurance to be one, uh, disability insurance, a number of projects at EDD fell under her purview during her tenure at EDD. Last but not least, we have Mehdi Bomeshi. Mehdi was, uh, currently is the CIO of High Speed Rail. Uh, formerly, Mehdi was the uh, Chief of Project Management Office also at EDD. So he also brings extensive background with regards to managing large-scale, multiple projects that require extensive um, oversight and direction. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Gopal, who will basically run us through his presentation. And if you have any questions, as I mentioned, please raise your hand and we'll cover those. Gopal? Thank you. Yes, uh, we will, as, as we continue, 
Uh, the idea is to present some area that we believe portfolios can be managed. And I don't want to wait till the end for questions that apply to you or you have uh, interest in. And you can raise your hand, ask me the question. And at that time, panel may be also able to, uh, to uh, uh, say things on that. And then we will have sufficient time at the end just for the panel discussion because they know more about you than I do. We've had long uh, interaction with the state of California, the CAPMM. Those of you who like it, we designed it for <laughs> state of California. If you don't like it, you haven't heard it from the right people. <laughs> uh, so, we, so when Terry Takai was here, we were heavily involved in, uh, in, in a whole bunch of areas. And many, 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 many years ago, when they had the SEEP department, we also provided through PK a lot of training as well. So we worked with the state for quite some time. So let's talk about managing multiple projects and portfolio management. And Just push the return button. I don't think the remote works. On the laptop? Yeah. Uh, is this active or you can not Oh, okay. Okay, all right. All right, central project management, just our core business is to business processing and optimization of skills all the way from executive to project managers. We also, uh, Making Me First is a program we created. Making Me First is a program we created. In fact, my son, who's the president of the company, was traveling in an airplane, and uh, announcements came that in case of fall of pressure, uh, these things will come down. And they make a big point saying, put on your first before helping others. In fact, they have to be very careful about mothers with infants who by nature want to put the one on the kid first. And that's a big mistake because if they don't have one on their own, they can't manage the kid. So he thought about that, that you have to take care of your first before you can take care of others. So he created a program called Making Me First, which says you have to be financially, socially, spiritually, health-wise, and in all different ways in the top condition before you can help anybody else. And so that program teaches you how to be good with yourself so that you can help people in the org company and outside the company. And then Family Green Survival, which you heard a little bit this morning. My hobby is cooking, and so I brought nutrition plus my project management abilities to serve people who have to miss meals because they don't have the money. And they were usually getting not good quality meals. So we have created a whole program of meals. And you saw Bag of Life this morning, Grand Heart Cereal, and then there are three other meals. So we have, and I'm gonna again, I don't know if any of the sponsors are here, those people who were so generous to collectively give us $6,000 that will go towards feeding six times four, that many breakfasts will be served, 6,000 times, 24,000 breakfasts be served to, to people that who need it. All right, uh, I teach a session at uh, a program at UC Berkeley, and that is 14 hours long. And today I'm gonna talk for one hour uh, for all of what I do <laughs> in that 14 hours. <coughs> so it's going to be fast and furious, but the, the only thing is you will not get all the tests that we give and which you have to then get the grade and all that stuff. Uh, but that is a program, UC Extension, we do it in uh, uh, Berkeley and also Belmont. So if you have anybody in the Silicon Valley interested in this, uh, tweet them and they can find out. <laughs> uh, I would like you to read this slide, please. <laughs> uh, this is an article I wrote many years ago about portfolio management, and this is still true. When I watched the, the hearings, the Senate of VA, the hearings I uh, watched on Senate by Toyota people and GM, 
Uh, they, they just came in there. They don't know how to run an airline. They don't know how to run a car company. They don't know how to run whatever they were running and now the VA people. And so this is something, if you just take the word airline and airplane and put projects in, it's very, very true. So people are harming a whole bunch of people by doing such silly things, but eventually things get done. People get paid, people, you know, things go uh, happen, <laughs> but not in the right sequence, but not in the right you know, cost, not the right outcome. And so there's a very high body count. <laughs> and then we are pleading for mercy all the time. I don't know how many of you have watched uh, Monty Python shows, and they have a skit where they line people up at a, on a, on a uh, run a race, uh, place and somebody comes out and shoots a gun. Everybody runs in different directions <laughs> and the skit is over. <laughs> That's it. And then a line comes on the screen which says, a race for people with no sense of directions. <laughs> That's how most IT projects are managed. There are people in there with all the technology. You know, they got iPhones, they got Surface phones, they got all kind of technology in their hand. They come to the room and they leave without knowing anything to do, and the project manager just shoots the gun, and every time they begin to aim it a little better when people come around, and so that shoot a wild sh shootout, not a good thing to do in projects. So, state of project management. We find these as the key problems in a organization. They're projects that are not aligned to the agencies or the organization's strategy. A uh, very few people know agency's strategy. Uh, if you go to an agency, you go to a company, you ask people, what is your management strategy this year? They don't have a clue. It should be on the screen. Every, you know, there should be a screensaver which gives you the strategy for the agency. It should also tell you how much we have planned, how much we have met, how much we are behind. You should know. And if that, that comes up 9.30 in the morning and the, everything is red, you know you're not going home today. Because, <laughs> and if it's all green, it's well, see you tomorrow. Uh, because I don't want to waste anybody's time sitting here. Unapproved project. But 10 to 15% of projects that are in there are unapproved. People have money, they can't get people to do it, so they hire their cousins, their nephews, their contractors, and themselves, oh, let me get a spreadsheet, oh, I can use a website to do this. So they start these projects, and they're unapproved. Then they get to the size that they need to be approved, and then they get into a problem, duplicate functionality. Bigger the organization, more duplicate things gonna happen. Simple as that, because other people don't know what people are doing. And there's a very simple solution to that, I'll show you very shortly, and poorly sponsored projects. Uh, we talked about sponsorship this morning, lunch people talked about sponsorship, there was a session on executive sponsorship, a poorly sponsored project, uh, so, so they go into the risk, and then the poor customer buy-in. Uh, again, when you go home, Google, <coughs> Cedar Sinai, 42 million loss project, it'll come up. They put a $42 million patient management system in, 30 days later, they had to dump it because the physician didn't like it, doctors didn't like it, the, 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 the nurses didn't like it, and pharmacists didn't like it. So they interviewed the people who did the project. Uh, the, uh, the, so they said, well, during the analysis time, these people won't cooperate. They didn't tell us their requirements. So we just build what we thought they will need. <laughs> Is that a thing to do? No, but that's what happens. And then shutdown conditions are breached. Uh, again, I talked about that. So these are the problems, and we find this is about from it goes from 10 to 30 percent of waste that takes place in organization. These are numbers not to add. Many of these overlap. So we find is that this is waste in an organization. And the first thing you can gain by writing, doing a good portfolio management is reduce your IT budget by 20 to 30 percent and deliver the same thing you were delivering before because the waste goes away. When the waste goes away, then you don't have the problems of, of that. So, so, so do you know the numbers for your agency? So while I let, you, let me ask you 
to, to talk at your table for just a few seconds. In, in your agency, are there any problems like this? And do you know what they are? And do executives know what, where they are? And eventually, they should appear on a screensaver. We, he should say, we are wasting 20% of duplication. We sh <laughs> and then we, we take that out. You know? So, few seconds, every table, uh, do you know these numbers for your agency? Okay, so I won't ask you to g give the answers because that's for you to think about. By the way, this, this presentation is going to be on the website. Uh, I think they already have it or they will have it soon. All right, the other thing is if you talk to Gartner, if you talk to any of the advisory services, they tell you about what percent of budget you should be spending where. On infrastructure, on lights on, on growth, and on innovation. Uh, so the thing is, are we doing that? And so the actuals for the top two are too high, the actuals for the bottom two are too low. So there's very little innovation. Uh, you know, Texas people are trying to get a whole lot of businesses going from here to Texas. I heard yesterday, New York, they're giving a 10-year no tax to new businesses that come in. They just announced that. You know, we started a not-for-profit uh, in California, and we applied to the uh, IRS. They have a year and a half wait uh, to get that done. State of California charges us tax because we are not a not-for-profit. So how can people who are starting not-for-profit who have no money pay taxes while they have no money? But you have to pay. So how many? So you know, innovation would be think about something of that type, Texas and 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 New York and so forth. So we need to know that. So how do you do all of this? So let's. Uh, so this is the manifesto that we find from executive that teaches a, a program at the Kennedy School at Harvard and also UC Berkeley. We ask people what is it that keeps you awake? Was it what is it that bothers you? And what is it that you would like to have? This is a collective response from those executives. He said. I need to learn to know how to manage multiple competing projects. In fact, I got very interested when Nasser con uh, uh, contacted me because that was the key of his talk. I said, well, that's a very important talk. I'll be very happy. I would like to be part of that. Balance capacity versus demand. Uh, airlines. I have this uh, doctor groups, hospitals, airlines have a big problem of balancing resources which are all very expensive to the demand and how do you do this is very, very important. Organizational investment. I think one th if you could teach one thing to any employee, is this is an investment of money. Suppose they took those $25 million and put in a low risk uh, fund at a bank what would they get from that? Are you giving them at least that or a little more? Or are you not? Are you sucking it all out and nothing is coming out to them? People need to understand that. Risks, maximum value, minimize waste. Uh, my my nutri uh, hobby is nutrition and cooking and there's a, just horrible numbers on how much food is wasted in stores, how much food is wasted in restaurants, how much food is wasted in homes, and if you could reduce uh, waste, we can reduce our food consumption by 20 to 30 percent because that is all going down the drain. At least you should put in a compost, uh, <laughs> but they put it in a drain, which is not a good thing to do. And so we ask people, if you're wasting your food at home, get a compost going and if you they say well i don't have a garden i say just spread it outside bullshit like we <laughs> have <laughs> so there are six i'm going to talk about six portfolios that compi comprise a total portfolio and the whole system came to us when we were called in by a ceo of a of an airline company and he actually took me and one other consultant to a tower and he said, well, let me show you how airplanes are managed. Nobody says, oh, where'd that come from? 747. <laughs> you know? They know a 747 is coming. They know which one are in trouble. They know which one is low on, on fuel. They know which one has some emergency. And they have to manage all that all the time. So he said, I want my projects managed as these are managed. So we think about it as an airline 
management system. So project charters. So first of all, you have a portfolio of charters. So proposals. All the proposals that are going around, and now I heard, heard this morning that Carlos talked about how the proposal program is being improved so that you will have them more. So all the proposal will go into a proposal portfolio. You do a high level estimate called size estimate very early. So if I add up all the high estimates, I know charters that I have, demand is $135 million. What is our budget? 125 it has stopped taking any new proposals because we are already proposaled out from what we have uh, for that or our budget is 175 yeah proposal was 125 need some few new proposals to load up our portfolio and the size of the triangle rectangle is the size of the project so now if i put my cursor on it click it and I have the password access, it will give me information that is below on the project, I will have that. If that is approved, now we go into planning it. This is now, the charter looks good, we have a plan. In plan, now we have the schedule, we have the estimates, so now they all have an expiration date. I don't know how many of you have done a painting contractor or some any building contractor every uh, contract you get at the very bottom has the expiration date. Do you remember seeing that? When, when was the last time you gave a IT estimate to somebody that had an expiration date on the bottom of it? You say, if it doesn't by that they start, I will have to re-estimate. My people are going to be deployed other places, cost going to be more, I may be busy other, other things. So the project ex proposal expires and we say 45 days is a good thing to have. Then you have to rethink about all these things. Now engineers have a line, say you can go broke giving bids. Because the people don't pay you for bids. Proposal or bids, so if you all you're doing is proposals and no projects, then you are wasting money because proposals do not build functionality. Proposals have proposal to build functionality, so you actually can put a budget how you much you're gonna spend on proposals. And you can say our budget for proposals are done out. And so we can't do any more proposals because they are done by senior people. Junior people don't do proposals. So you take a senior person who's already overworked, say, oh, one more proposal. In the meanwhile, the project is going from green to yellow to red, and the proposal is coming, so we are poorly managing all that. So now we have in the uh, planning, so in the plan, now uh, I, everybody, those who have worked with the CAPMM, there's a complexity diagram. Everybody remember a square complexity diagram? I can tell how many zone four projects I have, how many zone one projects I have, what type, I need 75 project managers, I need 37 sponsors, I need 355 brains and heads, and I can also say for each job what type of skill I need, so I can, you know, as a cook, when we have a recipe, and you can use four recipes for a dinner, it prints you the ingredients list. Have you seen that? And you can also sort it in the order of those things in your favorite market so that you don't have to run around doing that. You can do the same thing here. I know how many dishes you're going to cook and what the dishes take, what type of cooks I need. You know, so we're going to make souffles. You say, well, rather be quiet. We're going to have rock band and we're gonna make a souffle no you're gonna make <laughs> flat pancakes because souffles do not sustain rock bands because you have to be very quiet around souffles so you have to whisper uh, around those uh, so th so now so those type of things you need so now we have so that is the demand so i can now tell you what the demand is on our agency of dollars, of people, of sponsors, and type of project managers I need. If certain projects require certified project manager, we say we need 23 three certified project managers. And if we need people training in cloud, we need people in, people in security, it tells you all of those very much like a ingredient list tells you for what you're going to cook. Once you've done that, this is a complexity diagram. You all have, most of people have seen it. So each triangle is a project. Size of the triangle tells you the size of the project. And some people use a bubble, some people use a square, some people use a triangle. And it tells you red means those projects are in trouble, yellow means they're getting into trouble, and green means they're fine. So you can, you can, first thing in the morning you come in, you should see this. 
and that tells you what the rest of the day is going to look like. <laughs> uh, and if it's, if it's a lot of red, we tell you, okay, seven you know, deep breaths. <laughs> seven times. You know? So that will give you by the next break. So you, I was talking to, I think I talked to Davood, seven times seven. So seven times a day, seven breaths, you're okay. You don't have to take those pills. You can just do it this way. <laughs> uh, or you can take pills. Now, so <laughs> this one tells me, <laughs> this one tells me what am I using? Oh, by then a mega project comes. $250 million. You say, whoa, that's going to kill us all. You know? And we, we cannot do this project because it does not fit our complexity diagram. So we got to break it up to bring it in or bring teams that can overpower the project. And if you bring that in, this complexity will reduce, it'll come in. And it will, you, you say you can tell from there what you have, what you don't have. So this one is the usage and supply, what you're using. And for each project, there is a delivery day. So now we know when they're going to be delivered, when people will be available, exactly what the airline people do with the crew. It's exactly the same thing they, they're done that way. Or uh, the limousine companies do with a, uh, their, their crew. And if you don't do it right, you appear on Judge Judy. There was yesterday, I was watching Judge Judy, this limousine people showed up. They were late. And the people had to redo their flights, and it cost them $2,000. Oh, she gave them $2,000 because these limousine people were two hours late. And so because it will tell you, gee, we cannot get there, at least you can call them ahead of time and see what to do, or you can appear on Judge Judy. Not a good <laughs> thing. Uh, operations. So now we have landed the projects. And we have landed so many projects. We landed some well, uh, some not so well, others we crashed. Uh, the c customer is still cursing us, you know, they're saying our name but not in the right way and those are the red projects. So we are, our performance, the, these, th these things are eating all the database, this is eating all the b bandwidth or security doesn't work. It tells me that operation. It also tells me any projects I have suspended. So if you have a project halt pro pro process, you suspend some projects due to a whole bunch of reasons and projects that you've canceled, when we go to organization and say, do you have any projects in yellow and red? If they say no, we know they're lying. <laughs> in fact, I will, so I ask people, the manager, we sell managers, you're going to get type 4 diabetes. That's a type 4. Type 1 is immune system. Type 2 is insulin resistance. Type 3 now, they're thinking of Alzheimer's being a, uh, a insulin resistance in the brain. Type 4 is a we just going to write an article on this. Uh, type 4 diabetes is get managers get it and first of all, sugar-coated reports. <laughs> <laughs> so now, first thing you get is delusion. <laughs> you think everything is fine. <laughs> then you get hallucination. <laughs> you say, oh, that looks good to me. <laughs> Third thing you get is finger pointing. You got to find yeah. somebody to blame. And the fourth thing is desire to eat comforting food. <laughs> I uh, said, oh, I gotta go eat something. So some people go to Persian restaurants, Indian <laughs> restaurants, you know, Louisiana restaurants, you know, KFC. They don't really know. If, if you don't know food, you go to KFC. Uh, so uh, sugar, salt, white flour, and bacon. So that is type 4 diabetes. I'm just working on an article on that. Uh, so that's, this, this, is, this is a portfolio. You come in the morning, this is on your screen. You say, okay, and you number each one of those. We've got 35 proposals, we've got 17 plans, we've got 36 projects going, we've deployed 37, two are suspended, and three are canceled. You see that. You put a cursor on it, depending on your access code, it gives you more information that way. There it is. And you can look at all the summaries, and I'll show you some of that. So let me take a moment. You every time people talk on the table, do you believe this type of portfolio structure would be helpful, would be applicable, and useful in your agency or organization? One minute, table, please, discuss. <laughs> 